Welcome to Sports Line, brought to you by Ace Hardware, New Kensington, AKLC Studios in Leechburg, Arnold Furniture, Fifth Avenue, Buffalo Bills, New Kensington, Fazio's Deli and Meats in Arnold, Highland Tire, Toronto and Natrona Heights, Matteo's Pizza and Subs, Brackenridge Heights, Resevich Family Funeral Homes, Lower Borough in Arnold, 380 Discount Warehouse, Murraysville, Tower Auto in Blahawks, and Westmoreland Insurance Services of New Kensington. It is great to have you with us. Bob Tattern here along with George Guido tonight. George, good to have you. Good to be here. We're going to be here for the next 60 minutes to talk sports with you. And um, it's, uh, it's, well, the Pirates uh, continue to take center stage for a while. This is, one of, this is the second consecutive year that we've not given up on them as soon as the Steelers get underway in training camp. So um, as far as uh, Pirate favorites go, I, I got to love Harrison. There's just oh, something yeah, yeah. about this guy. He brings so um, much energy to the game. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a little kid. So anyway, folks, anything you want to talk about tonight, 724-236-0430 is the number. And on my website, when you click on that link, that phone number is there. That'll help you out. And we are live, of course, on a Monday night uh, by streaming video. but. We're on uh, Thursday actual nights, cable yeah. TV Thursday night, so if you're watching this one on a Thursday, uh, uh, please consider giving us a call live between 6 and 7 o'clock on Monday nights. Even if you're not with your computer or around your computer, Bob, they can make the call, right? Yeah. They can. That's true. And again, it's 724-236-0430. Let's take a look at rules and regulations on how to win a prize on the program. First of all, you can only win every other week at your household address. And the reason we had that put in is because mom would win one week, dad the next week, their son the third week. And so we try to spread the prizes around. The Grand Salami Prize or the Mystery Profile can be won only once in a calendar month, so it's one or the other. You can try the Mystery Profile once in a calendar month. And if um, when we get you on the air with your multiple choice, you've got 15 seconds to come up with the correct answer. You have four possibilities uh, with your multiple choice grand salamis or 20 seconds and the mystery profile clue by clue. First time callers will get two or more prizes when they come up with a correct answer. Get the answers by going to my website, doubledribblebob.com. And every day there's a fresh trivia question up there. And if you're going to watch my radio or listen to my radio program, of course, if you watch it, let me know. That's the first. <laughs> but if you listen to my radio show, I have one trivia question that I put on there that I can somehow squeeze into the mix of the Grand Salami. So you might luck out, and you already know the answer. So there you are. Okay, George and I will take a break. We're going to come back, and the first caller up is, is due in. So we'll do that. Uh, tonight we can talk about uh, Steeler prospects. Steeler, uh, uh, yeah, training camp is open. They hit for the first time today. A little bit with under pads. some rainy skies, yeah. too. So anyway, uh, you got the uh, Pirates and the Steelers and whatever else you want to chat about. But let's keep it above board and uh, chippy, okay? Back in a flash. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome to Buffalo Bills Roadhouse, the place for big appetites. Their great sandwich selection includes the Geronimo, piled high with generous portions of meat and fixings. Their barbecue ribs are the best in town. Half rack or full rack, they don't come better. Buffalo Bills wings are everybody's favorite. Uniquely oven baked, not deep fried, and yet so crispy. Your choice of 13 flavored seasonings. Grab the bucket for the big game. Eat in or take out, credit cards accepted. Buffalo Bills Roadhouse, Freeport Road, New Kensington, across from Falderelli Square. For over 38 years and three generations, Arnold Furniture has been the area's favorite furniture store. 
We have over four floors of living rooms, dining rooms, recliners, bedding, carpeting, and so much more. You'll always find friendly personal service from one of the family. And our prices consistently beat the competition, plus free local delivery and free setup guaranteed. Visit Arnold Furniture online at arnoldfurnitureinc.com or stop in and see us today. AKLC Studios LLC is the place for your video and multimedia needs. Let AKLC Studios produce a unique television commercial for your business. At your location or in our studios, we're here to meet your needs. Ever want your own television show? Let us show you how. AKLC Studios LLC can even tape your special events and weddings. Whatever your multimedia need, call AKLC Studios LLC in Leechburg today. Professional quality at hometown prices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Tower Auto Sales, located in Blonox, has 40 years of experience and they're at the same location for the last four decades. Allow Tower Auto Sales to help you with your uh, selection of your next pre-owned vehicle. Get a hold of Mike Fanto. Mike Fanto can be uh, dialed up, as we say, 412-828-6202. And uh, as they say at Tower Auto, just buy it. Okay, folks, we're going to get to the phones. Tony is in the uh, leadoff position. Tony, welcome to the show. Hello. Yep. Can you hear us? How are you? Okay. How are you guys doing? Well, we're doing fine. Oh, well. Okay. George, glad to hear from you again. Oh, I'm here. Yeah, glad to be here tonight. Okay. Uh, I don't have much to say about the parts. All they got to say, the management has, has the proper people that call your show, the kind they love. The only thing I'm going to say about it, 3521. Now let's go to the Steelers. <clears throat> ah, nice article in the paper today, right? Which one? Cheapest corners in the league. That's what they're going with. The cheapest ones they could find. That's what the article said. Pay, pay wise. That's that's been part of their problem <laughs> for a long time, and we're looking for bargains. I don't understand it. Well, I think everybody is, and the teams that don't, you know, usually devote their whole payroll to a couple of people are the ones that usually aren't successful. You, with a salary cap, you've got to try to spread that out. I understand uh, to, that. You know, be able to get as many people underneath that. And the Steelers have been close to the cap uh, mm. uh, uh, maximum you, for how long? But let me tell you what I heard today. There was something about uh, 2014, 2015, and 2016, where the salary, I'm sorry, not the salary cap, but the uh, TV money allotment mm -hmm. to all the teams is going to increase like right. $20 million a year yeah. for the next three years. Each yeah. year is going to be 20. So there's money there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, uh, still yes, there some is. some breathing room, presumably, next year. So uh, maybe next year we'll get a, a, you know, one bona fide corner. You know I mean? Something... Decent, anyhow. Yeah, that you know, any more in pro football, your cornerback pretty much has to be your best athlete, at least <laughs> maybe your fastest athlete. That's that's just the way the game is now. Well, yeah, the wide receivers coming out are faster, bigger, taller. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sleeker. <laughs> and, and yeah, you better be able to watch them. You know, and uh, well, we'll see. You know, that's all I can say. We'll see, uh, but. Uh, I, you know, I, I have no predictions. You know, I'm hoping that uh, they do better uh, than eight and eight. So. Uh, I think so. I, I think uh, they can do, uh, you know, not exponentially better than eight and eight, but I think I could see maybe ten wins. Uh, well, there are some bar writers bar that have already. Go ahead, Tony. Bar injuries, I said. Mm. Yeah. There are some you writers know. I have heard over the last couple of days that have said that the Steelers have a pretty good shot at not only making the playoffs, but They're winning you know. the division, yeah. Uh, it's strange how the Steelers schedule. I think uh, Tennessee is the farthest game they have this year. Correct me if I'm wrong. And You're it's kidding, the yeah. Only uh, game yeah. outside the Eastern time zone, I believe. Well, that's unusual. Yeah, because last year there were uh, trips, I know they, they went to Oakland. Uh, yeah. Uh, one time, and they were sitting in know, San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco. I, you know, they had uh, a number of uh, they had they had quite a travel schedule. Let's put it that way. 
Well, let's uh, see. This they year, go, it's, it's uh, kind of strange how it worked out. I have the schedule right here. They play the Panthers at, you know, at the Panthers, uh, at Jaguars, at Texas. No. No. No, no, no. They play at home. Yeah, uh, Texas at the Jets, here, yeah. at the Titans, yeah. at the Bengals, at the Falcons. That's it. Even their exhibition games, they go to the Giants and Eagles. Yeah, the, well, the exhibition games, you see them, uh, they don't uh, stray too far away from home. No, I will. You, you can't blame them, I guess. Well, you're going down Friday night to uh, Latrobe Memorial Stadium. They have their night practice. Is that the night the Bill, Buffalo Bills are coming down? For like uh, a that's the middle of August. Scrimmage oh, oh that, that's later yeah. on. Okay. Yeah, they're supposed to scrimmage them a couple of times. I uh, stopped doing that a long time ago. I used to go down, you know, and do the whole thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, after you win six Super Bowls, that gets kind of old, you know. <laughs> I can remember probably about 10 years ago when the news first came out that the Washington Redskins were charging $20 to come in and watch them yeah. at training camp. Yeah. Oh, $20 a head. And we thought that was screwy. Now, I don't know if they've uh, totally gotten away from that. Or if other teams have... Uh, wow. I can't see Daniel Snyder giving up 20 <laughs> bucks that he has a chance to make. There's no way. Well, let's see. Now, the students won six Super Bowls. They should be charging $100, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Redskins have only won three, right? Yeah, so they're charging 20 We still should be charging 100 So, uh, boy, boy, that is cheap. Uh, that would make me go to the... <laughs> you know, to that. Uh, I really will. So, hey, there ain't much... Uh, Oh, there was an article in the paper about how much time these batters taking a batter's ball. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's getting ridiculous. Well, Look the, at yesterday's Pirate game. Three yeah. hours and 56 minutes for a nine-inning baseball game. Right. Now, you know, let's get serious here. And there were no rain delays. No rain delays. Well, they did make some <laughs> yeah. pitching changes. Yeah. Human <laughs> being delays. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it just gets me, like I oh, said, a guy will get up there. He'll, he won't even swing. Gets out. He's got to adjust his gloves. Yeah. Like, you know, that just drives me nuts. Well, and uh, you know, <laughs> the different things, in and out, in and out, in and out. But uh, now, one time yesterday in that game, I swear that uh, I think it was Harrison stepped out, and the umpire didn't give him time out. Right. He, he didn't put his. And, you know, the pitcher could have threw the ball, and really? there was two strikes on him at the time. Yeah, you know, but uh, but but the pitcher just stepped off the mound. I'd like to see the umpires do that more. Yeah, the rules yeah. are well, there. Let's well, enforce you know, but, them. But, but but I understand why he did. That pitcher was taking so long. Yeah, you know, to throw the ball in. I mean, you know, in that case, you, you know, give it to him. But uh, oh well. Eh. You know, if the pitcher takes too long, you forget what the signs were. <laughs> Look at the third <laughs> and, base coach. And, and, and by yeah, the wait, way, am I supposed to bunt or am I supposed to take this? Or yeah. yeah, well. Hey. And by the way, we had a pitcher yesterday, and I forget which one it was, that got the side out, nine pitches, nine strikes. Oh, that was Watson, I believe. Yeah. Was it Watson? Or no, it was, I'm sorry, it was Melanson in the ninth inning. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Nine yeah. pitches, yeah. And even with that, the game went four hours yeah. almost. Yeah. It's amazing, you know how you know how you know how good he can look, uh, like you know just like yesterday. He he has all the pitches, you know what I mean. You're talking about Melanson. Yeah, Melanson. Yeah. yeah, he has all the pitches. You know what I mean. Yeah. But then I just get some, sometimes he comes in. He looks like he never threw the ball. You know. I know. I just get worried uh, when Melanson gets that what I call the Tino Sinceri look on his face. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I get worried. Yeah, well, you know what? He starts heaving his chest out. That's when I get worried. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh you know, he's <laughs> breathing heavy. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Now, uh, what, you know, Tony uh, Watson, uh, he gave up the home run yesterday, right? Was who, that him? Uh, yeah, he gave up the home run in seventh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, they were talking about making him a starter. Watson? Yeah, they, you know, they said mm. that you know, they might make a starter out of him because you know, he could throw the ball near 100 miles an hour. Uh-huh. But he, that's all he throws. He just throws fastballs. Right. I don't see him throw anything else. So that, that, that was a while ago when they, they were considered maybe, you know, to try to make a starter out of him. I could see the clo him being a closer someday. Yeah, but boy, yeah. A starter. But, but I heard starter. Yeah. I said, oh, okay. Now, they've and, talked uh, about Justin Wilson at times, you know, becoming a starter again someday. He was a mm -hmm. starter almost his entire minor league career. Yeah, and when he right. came up to the Pirates, you know, they didn't have any room in the rotation for him. Yeah, right. Well, hey, and that's another one. 
you know, uh, you know, with all these injuries they're having, and you know, Cole, he could be injury prone, uh, and uh, you know, they got to get they got to get a stopper somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think uh, I, you know they had a good stopper, but I wasn't going to talk too much about them. But but that's all right. All right, Bob, let's go to uh, tri- the trivia. Okay. Let's go to the um, salam. To the Grand Salami. Yeah, let's get your doll out. Start putting the darts in it. <laughs> All right, let's have number one. Number one. George will oh, give you the Oh, my goodness. This, this is so easy, Tony. We might as well just bring the salami over to you Okay, right now. I'll see it to you guys next week. Just hit, put it in the mail and everything. All right? <laughs> okay, here we go. I don't even know if we should give you. Yeah, we'll give you the full 20 seconds for this. What brothers both hit home runs for the Boston Red Sox in the same game on July 4th, 1970. Quite a 4th of July for this family. Hmm, brothers. Boston. Oh, come on. Boston, Boston. Hmm. Oh, boy. How about the Conseco brothers? Hmm, no, it, but it started with a C. <laughs> That's, if How that's like any that? consolation to you. Well, well, at least do I get a banana or something? for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're talking about, the, you get the peels. You, we're talking about the Canigliaro brothers, oh, Tony Caligliero. and Billy Canigliaro, yeah. Boston area natives. Both hit they home runs on the same, same game, huh? Yes, Tony and Billy Canigliaro hit home runs for the Bosox in the same game, July 4th, 1970. Very good, very good. Guys, nice talking to you. See you next week. Okay. Tony, thank Tony, you. Tony, good hearing from you. All right, break time. We're going to come back. I know we have another caller. Uh, ready to go. In the meantime, if you're out there watching, it's 724-236-0430. George and I will be right back. Rockefellers in Freeport has 16-ounce Bud Light aluminum bottles for just $3.25 during all World Cup soccer games. Stop by Rockefellers in Freeport and enjoy a cold Bud Light. Here we go. This is where you get the absolute freshest deli meats and cheeses. Fazio's Italian Deli in Arnold. At Fazio's, you're getting only the best and freshest selection. Fazio's has its own bakery and offers you fresh baked bread, rolls, pastries, and more. Pick up individual salads to go. Italian sausages, hoagies, custom-made sandwiches, even party trays for your next get-together. Freshness and quality every time at Fazio's Italian Deli, Leishman and Dre in Arnold. There once was a hungry road that wouldn't let drivers get very far. It wore out their tires, forcing them to buy new ones. Then along came the Michelin man who proved the right tire changes everything. With long-lasting tires in place, those drivers were back on the road to saving money. Drive longer with the Michelin Defender Tire, backed by a 90,000-mile limited warranty. Michelin, a better way forward. Available at Highland Tire under the bridge in Toronto and Freeport Road, Natrona Heights. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Westmoreland provides a full range of coverage for all of your automobile needs. Westmoreland Insurance Services putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call 724-337-3557. Mogi's Irish Pub on Leechburg Road in Lower Borough has 16-ounce Bud Light aluminum bottles for just $2 every Saturday with local bands and DJs on the patio. Stop at a Mogi's Irish Pub and enjoy a cold Bud Light. Here we go. Well, we're going to talk a little bit here about Matteo's. Matteo's hand-tossed pizzas, their gyro sandwiches, subs and hoagies, calzones, strombolis, wingdings, and lots more. you got a game on that you're going to be watching uh, any particular night, give them a call. You can have it delivered, too, as a matter of fact, or stop by and pick it up. Easy location to spot, 1000 Broadview Boulevard, Brackenridge Heights. You can give them a call, 724-904-7312. Okay, don't forget now my uh, radio show Saturday mornings on WAVL. 910 on the radio dial on the AM side. We're going to go to Mike in Arnold. Mike, how you doing tonight? 
Hi, gentlemen. How are you? Hey, Bob. I watch your show all the time <laughs> on the radio and hear it on TV. About <laughs> hey, there's two things I want to ask you. Uh, anyone so you can answer this. I'd like to see the Steelers win it for the Emperor, for Chuck Noll. And um, I'm going to make a prediction and say 10-6. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not too... Uh... Too early to take predictions. Yeah, that's so reasonable. We're gonna put we're gonna put you down, Mike. Hey, Mike. We just talked before we went on the show about uh, being on Labor Day night. Now that is the that's a Monday, but it's the last Monday before the season starts. So, uh, you know, if you want to go with your ten and six, that's fine. But if you want to change it between now and Labor Day, we're gonna. That's usually our Labor Day tradition, right, Bob? The, the or the Monday before the. Steelers season starts to take everybody's Oh, the Steelers prediction. don't start until after. Oh, 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 wait a minute. And what did I say, 10 and 6? Mike, mm. don't change it. You can change it later. Yeah, you, you got you got another, uh, what, six weeks. And next week you'll change it again. No. Hey, I didn't change it last time, did I, Bob? Well, so I, there, I, I had it right on the money last year. Whatever I predicted, I forget what. Hey, you yeah, baloney. I won the present. I said eight and eight, so baloney. Oh, you were the one. Yeah. What did then? I didn't get it. Maybe, right. I, maybe I, I was it. nine I and seven. Eight and eight even. All right, Mike. We got you down for ten and six. Okay. Now, what I wanted to ask you was concerning the Pirates with, I'll tell you, uh, with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with, um, Alvarez throwing all the errors at first base. I would Alvarez. bench him. I would have done it before the All Star game. I would bench him and put Harrison in to play third base. Let me I tell would you say, something. Hey, watch how this guy throws. Maybe you'll learn something. Let me tell you something. If I were to say to you, there is a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame, he is the only man ever to lead his league in home runs and errors made in the same year. You'd never believe who it was. Yeah. And he was not an outfielder. Now we're talking an infielder. And he played shortstop at the time, I believe. That was before he moved to first base, right? Yep. Was it, was it with Pittsburgh? What, what did he say? He, he was with Pittsburgh. No, he wasn't with Pittsburgh. Oh, he was. Okay. I have no idea. I don't know that we have any shortstops in the Hall of Fame. Not many. That is the least amount of, uh, or well, how, how do I want to say it? There are less shortstops in the Hall of Fame base, than any you know, other position. I thought it was third base. Well, I think lately you've, you've got people it's, like Mike Schmidt get in and so okay, on. Okay, maybe but, it's changed. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, that, do you, you want me to tell you who it is? See, the only yeah, problem go, is... Go ahead, what the heck, go ahead. Well, the only problem is it's on the... Uh, multiple choice it'll be coming up probably in another week or so so i'm going to leave it sit mike and just make you watch the show <laughs> thank you i figured you'd do that deliberately you know <laughs> after i beat you last year and won that present with eight and eight. yeah I, but i'm ser i'm serious do you think that if i was manager that i would bench him and play uh harrison the rest of the time at third base and say, well mike you're seeing it in the late throw. innings at least right now you know, how many times in the last several weeks have you seen Alvarez being benched in a two-for-one switch late in the game? Yesterday, in fact, was an example of that. And uh, No, I mean, I mean Benjamin definitely well, and what have you. You know, and, uh, you know, he's got, what, 22, 23 already? Errors, yeah. He has, uh, he has 20 errors throwing and three errors fielding. Well, 23 altogether, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll go for multiple. Choice and maybe if George, I win this, I'm going to okay. look at this thing Okay, up here. here's a multiple choice for you, Mike, and it's uh, also a baseball question. Good, good, good. Okay, good. here we go. Who, Mike, was the only pitcher to be walked twice in the same World Series game with the bases loaded? This man, who is a pitcher, walked twice in the same World Series game with the bases loaded. Was it Jim Palmer, Bob Gibson, Whitey Ford, or Don Newcomb? It's either Whitey Ford or Don Newcomb. Um, boy, you hate me for asking this, Mike. Um, I'll say Don Newcomb. Excuse me? I'll say Don Newcomb. 
Well, Don should, Newcomb. Oh, Don Newcomb. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, that's not the right answer. It is Jim Palmer. Oh, Got uh, walked twice with the bases loaded. But hey, good guess, Mike. Nice hearing from okay. you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, let me let me chalk this up here and make sure I've got yeah. our basis covered. Okay, I am let's go to the phones here and pick up I guess the limo man's on. Bruce, welcome to the show. Hello. Ryan Howard wants to come to the Pirates. There's be no charge for him. Well, he could use a power hitting first baseman. Boy, it's a shame about how his career has gone. He's he was flying high there, and uh, he has never recovered from that uh, ruptured Achilles. Would you agree? Yeah, but he's still a hell of a first baseman. Oh, yeah. But nothing like he was before. The Pirates can get him for nothing. They're not going to go after David Price. No. Not I think Tampa cheap. Bay wants he to keep pay. Price now. But A.J. Burnett they should get. Well, I don't know. Those return acts usually don't work out very well. Plus, what, what do we have to Phillies pay him? want to That's pay half his salary. Say that again. I said the Phillies are willing to pick up half of A.J.'s salary. Well, plus it would be prorated for you know, the last two months of the year. And Plus, the um, I've heard a couple of the uh, Pittsburgh sports guys on the air, some are four, some are so. It, it's, I don't know, maybe it's halfway in between somewhere. Yeah. Some yeah. see it and some don't. He pitched eight. And Matt Cain is, has an elbow problem. Who? Matt Cain. Matt oh, Cain. Oh, from San Francisco, yeah. yeah. Hey, maybe, yeah. Uh, of course, I don't see A.J. Burnett going to San Francisco. Didn't no he do way. a perfect game a couple of years ago, Cain? Yeah. No yeah. way. He's they an East Coast him. guy, isn't he? They don't need him. He's not going anywhere. If he goes anywhere, he'll come here. Well, I thought Baltimore was in the conversation. Doesn't he live outside of Baltimore? He doesn't. Yeah, but it. they're not interested. No. And first baseman Mark Tessero will be out three games because of a strained back muscle. Mm. He's got ties in the AK Valley, Yes, by his the way. Uh, mother yeah. went to Highlands High School. And Bra Brandon Marshall is coming here soon. From not the Bears? Play. His, his uncle lives here. You there? Brandon. Yeah, we're yeah. here. Brandon Marshall. Number 15 Played for the, the Bears. Bears. Yeah. I'm just trying to place the family. I... Mm. Do they live in Marshall Township? No, they live in Arnold. His, his uncle was in a jailbird. He just got out not too oh, okay. long ago. Yep. Yeah. And the Rangers traded Soria to the Tigers. Right, they're closer. Yeah. The Rangers are languishing around last place, so I guess they don't need a closer. I guess not, no. And the Washington Nationals play Zimmerman on the DL. Which one? Huh? Which one? Jordan or Ryan? Say, uh, Ryan Zimmerman. Mm. Boy, there's a guy with so much talent that he just, he just can't seem to stay on the field. He's yeah. had so many injuries. Yeah, and 15 that's the, day. That's the problem when you get a young player who's somewhat new in the league and you sign him to a long-term contract. Mm -hmm. Washington can't get him on the field. And the guy has all the talent in the world. And they recalled Zach Walters from Syracuse. Well, they need some help uh, pitching-wise, uh, you know, with all the injuries they have. When, when Washington was in Pittsburgh on Memorial Day weekend, <clears throat> they, had, they had so many injuries that they said, the announcers said that they've had their projected starting lineup on the field for seven innings the whole year, the first two we months of the season. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's something. Oh, they, they've had the injury bug down there. Frank Thomas is one of the guys uh, nominated for the Hall of Fame. Well, I thought he was... He was no, he was actually inducted. He was inducted. Oh, he's already inducted. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's going in this year. How about a guy by the name of Chase Headley? The Padres traded him. To the Yankees, yeah. Yeah. And he got a hit as soon as he arrived at Yankee Stadium during the game. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, Limo man. He got a hit in the 12th inning and won the game. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Talk about and making I, an impression on your fir- or your new employer. Steelers cut Keon Wilson and signed Lou Toller. No. I never heard of him. No. Nope. That doesn't ring a bell with me either. The Mariners reacquired Kendris Morales. From, uh, who is he with? Minnesota, I think? Uh, I think so. Yeah, he signed late in the season. They were talking about the Pirates trying to get him uh, during the winter, but uh, he's a switch hitter, and he's such a poor fielder that with the Pirates' scheme of wanting the pitchers to uh, uh, throw infield ground balls, he probably wouldn't have worked out. That would be horrible to have Alvarez making errors on one side of the infield and Morales making errors on the other side of the infield. You'd have a bad combination. The Pirates are interested in left-hander Andrew Miller with the Red Sox. No, that's an acquisition I'd like to see, Limo Man. Yeah. Where nice, would we uh, put him? Where oh, late he's inning reliever. With a 137 batting average. Yeah. Yeah, the Pirates, he'd be that. a great in the sixth inning. And if Melanson would get hurt, he's, he's yeah. closed before. But the Pirates have been outscored in the sixth inning this year by something like 20 runs. It's something unbelievable. So the Pirates need somebody for the sixth inning. Yeah, I would think so. Do you see the uh, Hall of Fame inductees list? From yesterday, yes, yeah, so quite a list. Bobby Cox, Tony La Russa, Tom Glavin, Frank Thomas, Greg Maddox, and Joe Torrey. Yeah. What an array. That's a heck of a list. Boy, you better believe it. I wow. saw another Frank Thomas Thursday night in Freeport. I talked to... <clears throat> I talked to uh, Pat Boland today. He's uh, re- he has Alzheimer's. Yeah, poor guy. Boy, I had he's lunch uh, with him in Denver. Yeah, done such a great job as he uh, really the Denver has. Broncos owner. How about multiple choice, Bob? Okay, my turn. I think too. There by the go, way, yeah. All right, we take them in uh, in in order. You're up to number one on the rotation list. So here is your question. Who holds the Major League Baseball record for most RBIs in a season as a rookie? So what rookie had the most RBIs in a season? Was it Hack Wilson, Ted Williams, Albert Pujols, or Lance Berkman? I'll have to say Lance Berkman. Unfortunately... Ted Williams, 1939, as a rookie. Had quite a bit. He had 145 RBIs. That's something else. Okay, Bruce, thanks Thanks Thanks, for the call. Thank you. Boy, talk about making a splash on the scene, 145 RBIs. I'm telling you. First year. Then he goes to war in a couple of years. And And then he's he's back uh, better better than ever. Yeah, I did see the older Frank Thomas the other night at Freeport. he makes an appearance every year there. Did I tell you about what he was doing before he got out of the baseball field? His he parents, told me he, he was uh, going uh, He was in seminary school. Yes, he, he yeah. was in the seminary. He told me that one year in Freeport. He, yeah. was, uh, he was going to seminary school. He got the call, and uh, it turned out it was a false call, I guess. It was, and, uh, he went on to have a great career. It wasn't a wrong call. It was just a call that... Uh, he felt that he, he just wanted to play. Yeah. And look at Babe Ruth, and here's a kid that was in that orphanage. Yeah. He was always out in the playground with a stick. Mm-hmm. He was always looking for a bat. And you know what it was like then. Yeah. George, if he had a crack bat, you were king yeah. of the hill. Yeah, you're, you know. right. But anyway, folks, we owe for a break. We'll be coming back. I think we've got another caller. Am I right, guys? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Mark yeah. is on the line with us. So, Mark, hang in there, man. We've got a couple of minutes. We'll be right with you here on Sportsline Trivia. Since 1914, the local area has relied on the Resevich family of funeral homes in deepest times of need. The Resevich family is the oldest established name in the funeral profession of the AK Valley, now 100 years strong and still doing things right. Its reputation and unquestionable service now continues with a fourth generation. The Rusevich family of funeral homes, 5th Avenue Arnold and Leechburg Road in Lower Borough. 
AKLC Studios LLC is the place for your video and multimedia needs. Let AKLC Studios produce a unique television commercial for your business. At your location or in our studios, we're here to meet your needs. Ever want your own television show? Let us show you how. AKLC Studios LLC can even tape your special events and weddings. Whatever your multimedia need, call AKLC Studios LLC in Leechburg today. Professional quality at hometown prices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. 380 Auction and Discount Warehouse, Route 380 Murraysville. Automotive supplies, groceries, housewares, pet supplies. All at discount prices. Sofas, dining tables, recliners, dressers and desks, lamps and end tables. All at discount prices. Yard and landscaping supplies, special catalog orders, mattresses with full warranties. All at discount prices. School supplies, tools, paint, toiletries, model cars, toys. All at discount prices. Get to 380 Auction and Discount Warehouse today, Route 380 Murraysville. It's great shopping at Tower Auto Sales for your next pre-owned vehicle. They've got three indoor showrooms. It's a full-service facility with an experienced staff. They do feature Lexus products, but they can get you any make or model that you'd like to check into. Tower Auto Sales, Freeport Road in Blonox, just buy it. You can call Mike Fanto if you wish at 412-828-62. Oh, two. Folks, we're back and we're going to go to Mark. He's been on hold for quite a while. Mark, your hands sweaty or, or what? <laughs> no, good evening. I'm just listening to the conversation on the phone. <laughs> okay. Uh, how good was Robert Newhouse that played for Dallas about 30 years ago or so? Yeah, I heard he passed player. away recently. Yeah, he's a pretty good ball player, yeah. Uh, he took, uh, uh, I think he was the compliment to Tony Dorsett for a while, right? And then he... Uh, I'm going to... Do you mind if I look him up? Yeah, he's with the Oilers. What's the first name while. again? Robert I think Newhouse. it was Bob or Robert Newhouse. Yeah. Okay, we'll check him out. Okay, while well, you're looking, Bob, I, I like Polanco, but I think he's getting too anxious. He likes to swing at those real low pitches too much when he's striking out. Yeah. You didn't, notice didn't, that? I mean, when, he, he's, when he's on, he's on, but when he starts swinging wild, you know, he's not the same. You know, the only answer to that is to move up in the batter's box, and when you do that, you lose a little bit of, you know, edge on timing. Yeah. So. I mean, if he could learn to take some of those lower, I know, I know it's quick. You only have what about two fifths of a second. Or no, something. you got. I looked it up. In fact, I did a story on this on my website. Yeah, Maybe yeah. uh, it's four. I'm sorry, point four three four seconds. It's okay. not even a half a second. Yeah. About two, a little more than two. Well, they used to round a two fifth. Yeah, okay, less than half. But you no, know, I mean, I, I just he could just a little bit of patience, I guess. In, what his average has went has gone down a lot since uh, in the past month or so. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, but he could still hit good. It's just yeah, you hopefully he takes his time. A wealth of talent. It's just a matter of putting it all together. You know, he even looks good making out sometimes. I mean, that that's how much talent he has. He just has to, you know, get readjusted. The pitchers adjusted to him quickly, and he now, you know, has to get readjusted himself. So. And uh, how about the women's football pitch? The Passion ended up taking everything this year. Yeah. I covered one of their games for the Pittsburgh Tribune Review uh, several weeks ago. It's uh, an interesting brand of football, to say the least. Uh, I am surprised. I don't want to come across, the, of course, as sexist saying this, but I'm surprised in covering women's football how much they knew the little nuances of the game, since obviously... You know, there was no high school or college that they could have played. But they knew, for instance, if they're receiving a punt, not to accidentally touch the ball or the other team could retake possession. Little things like that. I was impressed how the ladies, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, had learned, you know, the little nuances of the game. It's an interesting brand of football. I know where I work a couple of years ago, a woman played for them. She's from New Ken, but I, they used to call her Purple Passion. I can't remember her name because she worked in the other building. I knew her to see, but I know her son went to Valley, and I can't remember her name, but she played a few years ago. Yeah, they have some local people on the yeah. team. Uh, Beth Amato from Freeport, or from uh, Plum, she's still playing. She's 49 years old, wow. and she's still playing football. Also, uh, hmm. uh, the young woman, uh, Duncan, the police officer from Springdale, is on the team, so they, they have some local flavor on that team. It's a shame they weren't covered on Root Sports. I think a couple years ago they were covering them. So 
some of their games, but were they on anywhere or on the they, Internet? They only? were en route on a delay. For instance, the game I covered, their first playoff oh, game, okay. uh, they had them on maybe like three nights later or four nights later because Chris Shovlin did the game on TV. Okay, now I hear you better now, George. I couldn't. Yeah, oh, okay. I was hearing an echo before. That's better now. <laughs> Okay, did Bob, did Bob find out about the Mr. Newhouse? I didn't get to the oh, okay. football reference, but it did, oh, okay. say, it did say he passed away in July this year, maybe a week what, or so ago. He was 60-something? But he was a guy, he said he had a stroke in 2010. Oh, okay. But anyway, he said, you know, they reminded us that he played bigger than his size. And, I remember, yeah, I think, yeah. didn't he have pretty big thighs, too? Like that, he did, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's one thing that was pointed guy, out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I'm ready for multiple choice, then, since All right. I've taken up some of your time. Okay, let's get the multiple choice here. Well, it's good hearing from you, Mark. It really I, is. I couldn't get through last week. You must have been busy. We were. Okay. We were. <laughs> okay, here's your question, Mark. Who hit the famous Homer in the Gloman? Was it Mel Ott, Babe Ruth, <clears throat> Gabby Hartnett, or Hank Greenberg? And I don't want to give him a clue, but this game affected Pittsburgh standings. Right. And they couldn't go on to play in right. the World Series. Yeah. How about Hank Greenberg? Mm. No? Not quite. It was actually Gabby Hartnett. Now, yeah. in 1938, the Pirates oh. had led most of the way. Back then, there was no playoffs. It was just National League and American yeah. League in the World Series. Uh -huh. So, uh, the Pirates were so confident they were going to get in the World Series that they built a third deck on the Forbes Field. They called it the Crow's Nest. It was actually the first of what you could call, we call now skybox seats. But you remember Forbes Field, how they had that third tier? In right field, you mean? No, uh, right behind home plate. It's the grand, oh, okay. grandstand. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And the Pirates were so confident, they had such a lead in 1938 that they figured, we're going to make the World Series, so we better add more seats to Forbes Field. They did. And on the last game of the season, the Pirates <laughs> needed a win against the Cubs. But, you know, at the time, Wrigley Field had no lights. And it was yeah, getting well, dark, and it was the umpire said, if the game isn't decided right now, we're done. And Gabby Hartnett hit a home run in the gloaming, or what we would call it the twilight. Oh, uh, okay. And I, I would consider the advantage to the pitcher in right. that game. Oh, absolutely. And, and he somehow connected. So, yeah. anyway. Well, okay, Mark, nice good try. Hopefully I can get through next week. Okay. okay. Yeah, we hope to hear from week. you. Thank you very much. Hey, before we get to Paul, I uh, did a little bit of research. Um, I was in contact with Bob Walk, and we were doing something here on the Pirates. He was looking for a term for pitchers that go seven innings minimum. So I suggested solid, and, you know, he, he went along with solid it. Solid seven. Yeah. Solid seven is what, is what Bob Walk calls it. So I go into the, uh, uh, the Pirates 2014 uh, season so far and have found, and we have played 104 games so far. Starting pitchers for the Pirates that have gone seven games this year, the whole number is only 32, if I have that marked down here somewhere. I yeah, think you got I, it, 32. Is it 32? Yeah. Right. So 32 out of 104, it comes out to about 31%. Yeah, yeah. The thing that I want to work on, and I, I don't know how much time I've got to do this, to find out what some of the top teams mm -hmm. are getting from their pitching. Yeah. You know, I have found out that in doing this research, a lot of times our guys would go six, six and two thirds, mm -hmm. six and a third, and would, would win the game. We've had other guys who went seven and would lose the game. So, but anyway. Remember James McDonald, a pitcher from a few years ago? He went about uh, his first two years without pitching the seventh inning when he finally did get seven <laughs> full innings and there was a celebration in the dugout. <laughs> like the guy from the, uh, I think it, was, it had to be the Mets. Last name was Young. He oh. was 0 and 27 yeah. in a stretch. Yeah. Yep. And when he finally won a game, he was on the Tonight Show. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, Paul joins us now from the studio audience. Oh, by the way, continuing, if I can, just for a moment. Pirate pitchers who have gone uh, seven innings or better. Morton has the most with eight. Mm. 
Volquez follows with six, Locke with five, and he's been out for a while. Yeah. Garrett Cole with four, and then three apiece for Worley, who pitches tonight. tonight yeah. And Compton and Liriano hmm. each have three. So that's the report that I was able to fool around oh, with well, and okay. put together. Paul, welcome to the program. Everyone that's here is here. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get, I did not get a chance to go to the Freeport uh, Invitational this year. I was going to go down Saturday, but with the storms coming through, I didn't go down. Was it a good turnout? It's a very, yeah, the good turnout for fireworks tonight. It's very yeah. interesting fireworks <clears throat> display. You had both fireworks coming from the marina and God's fireworks in the sky with the right. lightning. I never saw a fireworks display in such an intense uh, storm <laughs> as it was the other night, but they, they started and finished it, so give them credit. Was it as good as the one you saw in 1979? And <laughs> oh, 1986. Oh, no. 86, 86. There will never be a better fireworks display than the one I saw in 1986 on the 4th of July. It was, we were up in New York City for the Statue of Liberty rededication. Oh. And they After had, all the repairs yes, that had gone on, yeah. They were reopening it for 4th of July, and they had seven barges filled with fireworks around the tip of Manhattan. <laughs> and there were a million people, the police estimated, in Battery Park that day. And if you wow. ever, it's one thing to be in a crowd at a football stadium, but Penn State or Michigan right. or what have you, but boy, to be in an area with a million people in, in Battery Park, and it was just such a fantastic fireworks display. It, it really took your breath away. I'm not exaggerating. Right. It was something else. Right. Yeah. So no fireworks display <laughs> I've seen since then come close to. In fact, the pirate game, I don't even know that it's fireworks night. I, I walk out and uh, get ready right. to go home. That's so great that uh, one was in New York City. But uh, Freeport, they, uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing they have to cap off the week, the fireworks display. In New York City, how long was that uh, show, the fireworks? I, I, I don't recall right, exactly. Right. I'm going to say maybe 20 minutes to a right, half right. hour. That's about At good. least, I mean, it was just, it was, it was breathtaking to right. say the least. In uh, baseball, do you think there's too many divisions, like in uh, Major League Baseball, should they go back to four or s stay at six? I don't, you know, if they would add two more teams, I don't think there's enough. You could have a perfect right. uh, eight divisions with four teams each. I don't know what kind of scheduling problems you get from that, but right. uh, I have no problem with the divisions yeah. the way they are now. I like it better now that they have five in each instead of the yeah. right. cumbersome yeah, thing. The Pirates had six, and then the American League West had four. It's much, much better now that uh, everyone has four division opponents. Right. And then, too, when you were, you, know, you were talking about if you could go to 32 teams, mm -hmm. geographically, where do you put those two extra teams? Yeah. Right. Like right now, the Pirates are in the Central Division. Right. We belong in the East. The only move that makes any sense, really, is to take Atlanta and let them take the Pirates' place and put us back, you know, in that particular division. We'd right. be back with Philadelphia. So, my that opinion. That used to be I, a great rivalry, Pirates and the yeah. Phillies, my goodness. Yeah, 18 times a year, and now we play in, what, only six, I believe? Six, yeah. Six or seven. Well, seven this year, yeah. Right. So, other than that, and... Uh, yeah, I can't wait for high school football. What four weeks? I think four or five, and and uh, be here before you know it. I have my five stories in <laughs> this week. So five stories. Five. I did. Who, who, who are you writing on? Uh, Knock, Springdale, Riverview, and then uh, for the Tribune Review, I did Wilkinsburg and Chartiers, Houston. Mm. Do you do any city city league games or? Once in a while, not so much. We have a guy that uh, does the city right. league now, but. Last couple of years, I've done the City League Championship game right. down at uh, a couple stadium on the south side, right. same place where the Pittsburgh Passion ladies team plays, okay. a very historic stadium. Just wondered if either of you guys or okay. both of you would want to comment on why the numbers are down for kids that are coming out for football. What's happening? Maybe concussion, well, maybe? One, yeah. it's, it's a year-round thing now. You know, you have to yeah, dedicate you yourself make that year round. Yeah, and uh, two, uh, a lot of kids, you, you know, uh, aren't uh, uh, staying on the gravy train in the household long. You know, parents yeah. say, "Hey, you want to you want to get your driver's license? You've got to go out and get a job. You go out and you go out and work." <laughs> Plus, uh, there's just numbers wise. 
I mean, it's amazing how low the numbers are in the local schools. Bob, let me, let me give you guys a for instance. In 1965, Ken High, just Ken High, no Arnold then, they had 542 kids in the senior class. Oh this year, the entire Valley High School grades 10 through 12 will have 512 kids. So wow. you had wow. 65, which was the start of the baby boom. Three times as in. many? Yeah. You had three times as many in the school as you do now. And that was just New Kensington. We're talking now New Kensington and Arnold put together have 30 kids less than Ken High did by themselves in 65. So that's mm -hmm. another reason. And I remember looking, I just don't recall the year, but it was, uh, we're, we're talking about Highlands. When they booted them up to uh, Quad A. 1990. Was yeah. it? In a, yeah, one year yeah. only, yeah. But mm -hmm. anyway. They had a, it seemed like they had a lot of kids. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, they had to to make yeah. that grade, but yeah. now they're down to double, double A. a. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you never Paul, know. let's, let's okay, do I'll, some trivia. Uh, uh, multiple choice, please. Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. And we go in order, Paul, so you get question number three. Right. Hmm. We haven't had a winner tonight, by the way. Yeah, Paul, this is a this, this right. shot we're So we're, we're, rooting for we're you. 0 for 4, and okay. you're number 5. Okay. Who was the first switch hitter to be inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame? And there you have your choices. Frankie Frisch, Mickey Mantle, Richard Collins, and one of my favorites, Red Shandance, played for the Cardinals. Mickey Mantle? Uh, you're off. Frankie Frisch. By the way, it was... He went to Fordham. Yes, he was the Fordham Flash. Yeah. Right, but I'm saying he went to Fordham with Cardinal Spellman. There were two. Isn't yes. that? Mm -hmm. Frankie, I th I th there was Frankie Frisch and yeah. Frankie Spellman. Yeah. And Spellman wanted to play sports. Right. He wanted to play sports. <laughs> he, he instead became the head of the Archdiocese of New York. Uh, <laughs> or he became man. a Cardinal, right? Be, yeah. 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 Anyway, so Paul, thanks, okay. for, the, thanks for the effort. Okay. So we are officially tonight on trivia, 0 for 5. But I did want to mention uh, I got a uh, a good stack of coupons from Taco Bell and last week's winners. I think we had a, a few of them anyway. So everybody got Taco Bell, good. except the guy who um, at Terry up in New Ken, who and I want to I wonder if I made a note. I wanted to mention. He got a $25 coupon. He got 50 bucks mm -hmm. altogether. Yeah. He had a $25 coupon from Golden Dawn, a great place to shop. Yes. And he had another $25 coupon from the Tarentum Station. Mm. Very special yes. place to go. 25 bucks there. So Terry, uh, he's doing well, by the way, on the mystery profiles. Yeah. But you can only try the mystery profile once a month. Yeah. So... Anyway. I think we we're due for a break, Bob, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. All right, final break. And when we return, we're going to kind of wrap things up. Glad you could join us tonight we're back look, in a flash. Want to look at the Steelers schedule? Yeah, we'll look at the Steelers schedule, too. Mogie's Irish Pub on Leechburg Road in Lower Borough has 16-ounce Bud Light aluminum bottles for just $2 every Saturday with local bands and DJs on the patio. Stop at a Mogie's Irish Pub and enjoy a cold Bud Light. Here we go. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Accidents happen. Are you prepared? You can be with a wide range of homeowners insurance options from Westmoreland Insurance Services. Putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call, 724-337-3557. My first book on sports is available not only through the internet, but at various local businesses in the AK Valley. It's Bob Tattern's Sports Minutes. Short sports stories, odd and unusual, fascinating and funny, only take about a minute to read. Go online to doubledribblebob.com where links are provided for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Word Association to get book information. Get your copy locally at Costello Printing in Tarentum, Blackburn's in Tarentum, Myrna's Brewery Outlet in New Kensington, or the Hot Dog Guys Lower Borough. 
What is it that makes a Husqvarna dealer a Husqvarna dealer? Well, just look close at the engineering in our outdoor power equipment. We're known for high performance and reliability in everything we make. So is it any wonder your Husqvarna dealer is also known for high performance and reliability in everything they do? With a nationwide network of Husqvarna dealers, there's one just around the corner. Rockefellers in Freeport has 16-ounce Bud Light aluminum bottles for just $3.25 during all World Cup soccer games. Stop by Rockefellers in Freeport and enjoy a cold Bud Light. Here we go. Hey, don't forget my book, Ali Kiski Sports History, a compilation of uh, many stories, many photographs, uh, 304 pages, 151 photographs, 50 chapters of uh, the history that we're so proud of here in the AK Valley. It's 1995. You can pick one up at uh, Costello's Printing in Tarentum. And also, you want to get it online, which a lot of people are getting their books these days. You can get it uh, on your computer by uh, dialing up wordassociation.com. That's wordassociation.com. Bob? Yep. Yeah, let's, uh, I, I think the guy said that they had the uh, Steeler schedule uh, ready to go and get it up on the screen that we could take a look at the 2014 schedule. The preseason there. Start out on the 9th. Boy, that's not too far from now. That's the uh, end of next week at Giants Stadium and then come home to play the Bills, visit Philadelphia, then the uh, traditional last uh, exhibition game with the Carolina Panthers. That's on a Thursday night, by the way. George, I can't see the screen, right. so you well, go ahead and continue. First game is September 7th against the Browns. And then they go to the September 11th game, which Ray Rice will not be participating in. He got a two-game suspension, which is only with the Ravens' schedule, a five-day suspension. You have two games in five days. Come home to play the Panthers. Again. So they'll be playing the Panthers, <laughs> uh, what, uh, twice within uh, three and a half weeks. Then on the 28th of September, at home against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Then, October 5th, a trip to Jacksonville to play the Jaguars. That might be the last time the Steelers ever play in Jacksonville, as they're uh, probably going to move that franchise the way it looks now. Then the next game at Cleveland, then come home to play Houston and Indianapolis. That uh, Indianapolis game uh, ought to be something else. That's on a Sunday late afternoon game, then November 2nd, the Ravens, then uh, visit the Jets and the Titans. Titans, the furthest road trip of the year. And then the bye week doesn't come to week 12 this year. And the Steelers resume November 30th against the Saints. December 7th, it'll be at the Bengals. The following week at the Falcons. Uh, a lot of family members of mine from uh, Georgia will be going to that game. December 21st against the Chiefs and concluding the season home against the Bengals. So, Bob, that's uh, three of the last five games are at home. We'll see if that uh, plays out to be an advantage for the Steelers. I'm not going to give my prediction yet. Okay. Well, you're, I'm, you're, I'm holding I'm, on. Neither, neither am I. And we have told Mike from Arnold that he, if he wants to change his 10 and 6, the deadline is a Labor Day Labor show. Day, right. He's a Labor Day to do so. on Monday night. Folks, thank you for tuning in. Back next week, same place, same time. I'm Bob Tattern. George Guider. And good night. Thank you for watching Sportsline, brought to you by Ace Hardware, New Kensington, AKLC Studios in Leechburg, Arnold Furniture, Fifth Avenue, Buffalo Bills, New Kensington, Fazio's Deli and Meats in Arnold, Highland Tire, Toronto and Natrona Heights, Matteo's Pizza and Subs, Brackenridge Heights, Resevich Family Funeral Homes, Lower Burl in Arnold, 380 Discount Warehouse, Murraysville, Tower Auto in Blonox, and Westmoreland Insurance Services of New Kensington.